Okay, let's do some applications. A uh, specific application we'll work on is uh, within finance. There's a very common um, sort of uh, finance stock related metric called a beta. And uh, you'll see this in discussed in more detail in Finance 301. But we have what's called a capital asset pricing model. Okay. Pricing model, you know, sometimes called a cap M, mostly called a cap M. And there's a guy named Jack Trainer, and I think Robert Merton, they came, sort of came up with different flavors of it. Uh, and, and so what we're looking at is we're looking at our expected return for a particular stock is a function of the risk-free return. The risk-free return uh, means something you get from government bonds. You know, usually it's a, a longer term government bond, often a 10 year treasury of some sort. And then plus some beta, eh, which we know to be the slope. Right? And then what we call a risk premium. Okay, So return from the market minus uh, the risk free rate. Okay, So this is sort of a market, uh, the market rate of return or market premium. It's called just premium. Okay. Uh, typically this uh, RM is the, a return on an index. So for instance, for Canada, we have a TSX that uh, on the Toronto Stock Exchange, uh, TSX slash S&P, uh, and that would be like an index return. Again, the risk-free rate's still the same. Okay. Uh, so I did a model just, just so that I yeah, just so I could talk about another financial metric. I just moved this over here to that side. And so I looked at the expected return for a stock minus that risk-free rate uh, equals to some slope, uh, sorry, some standard set beta zero plus beta one, which is the beta we're talking about and which we've come to talk about. And then the market rate of return minus the risk-free rate of return. So this is like uh, this is like the X. That market premium. That is like the X. We have a market premium, and we have a slope, which in finance we call it a beta, and we'll interpret it the same. It essentially uh, states exactly from its stats uh, perspective is if there's an, an increase in the market rate, the risk-free rate is considered to be constant. Okay, So this is a constant. The market rate, of course, the rate of return on, uh, on an index or on the stock market changes every day. So if it, uh, an increase in uh, the market rate, how will that translate into an increase in the return on the stock? Right? Remember, risk-free rate stays constant. <clears throat> so it has the same interpretations as uh, any slope in statistics. Right? It's essentially it's a simple linear regression model. I mean, it's it's a big league model. You see it reported everywhere, um, but it is at the at its core just a simple linear regression. So I, I did this uh, a couple of regressions. This is all pre twenty twenty numbers because twenty twenty is as as we all know was for fairly tumultuous. Um, and uh, unique. So I have the rate of return for Transelta, which is a power company in Canada, I, in Alberta specifically, and then CIBC, good old bank stock. Okay. So we kind of look, we could do all our regular things, right? We look at our R squared, and we see it's 0.178, so 17.8% of the variation, uh, eight, uh, sorry, eight, 17.8% of the variation in Transelta stock is explained by this model. Okay, cool, right? Is the model significant? Well, let's do a really, let's do a really, really, really quick test, right? Model is significant. Let's see. Step one, HO, model not significant. HA, model is significant. Step two, uh, let's assume alpha. Let's, let's go the, the old standby 0 0.05. Step three, we have an F stat equal to 8.45. 
numerators, degrees of freedom of 1, because it's a simple linear regression, denominator, degrees of freedom of 39, uh, step 4, we have a p-value equal to 0 0.00. 5988, eight, let's go with. Step 5, I'm not going to write all this out. We all know P is less than or equal to uh, alpha. Therefore, we reject H0. Conclusion, model is significant. So you can finish the rest. So the model is significant. We could also look at the coefficient. What's our, what's our model look like? Okay, well, we have... Uh, in this case, we have uh, intercept B0 to be minus 2.0057, and a B1 equals to 1.5178, right? So our uh, expected value of uh, trans delta, so expected value trans delta return, really, uh, is equal to minus 2.0057 plus 1.5178 times by uh, the return on the, the market premium on the on the TSX. Okay. So a couple of interpretations uh, from here. Let's uh, if the TSX. Uh, increases right and these these are all percentages okay so increases by one percent uh, then trans alta increases by one times 1.5178 1 1.5178 1 percent same story on the downside now that's the positive news tsx goes down by one percent then that trans alta stock is expected to drop by 1.5178%. Okay. So it's, it has what we call an above average beta. So a little bit more volatility than the market in general. Okay. We can also look at uh, is that uh, um, is it significant, right? And uh, we can just say that, we'll just do that in words right now. Uh, we, we see that the p-value which is 0 .05987 0 0.005987903, right? Very low p-value. We would reject H0. What would our H0 be? That that slope is equal to zero. And we conclude that the slope is not equal to zero. So the TSX return does have a significant impact on the return for trans delta. Now, what's this minus 2.0 mean? Okay, so by theory, it should be zero. Right? It shouldn't. It shouldn't be anything, right? And and is it zero? Well, we look and we see a, a very high p value, and we would suggest that that constant is not significantly different than zero. Okay, so that that conforms with what our expectations were, you know. Theoretically, right? Since we move the RF over to this side, our assumption and our expectation is that the slope should not be significantly different than zero. Now we include, a, we keep it there uh, for theoretical reasons because uh, it has the potential to mess up our R squared otherwise, um, but we can assume that it's not significantly different than zero. If it were significantly different than zero, then that would uh, indicate that there's a scope for um, extra return. Uh, so this is a, an expectations model. That would be like uh, if it was a positive number and it was significantly different than zero, then that, that would be returns over and above what you're being compensated for for just regular risk. Uh, and conversely on the negative side. So this one's negative, which kind of suggests that Transalta has been trending to underperform its expectations. Again, it's not significantly zero, different than zero, so it's, you know, zero-ish, but, yeah. CIBC, 
same story, right? We see an R squared, 30.35, 35% of the variation in the return for CIBC can be explained by this model. Is the model significant? Yeah, look at that. Very small p-value. Uh, so, so this model is significant, right? We would reject H naught that it's not significant, except H, uh, yes, except H A that it is significant, and and that's that. We see um, an intercept, slightly positive intercept, but very high p-value, so not significantly different than zero. So, ooh, kind of look initially excited, ooh, getting extra returns uh, over and above uh, what we'd normally be compensated for, but eh, not really significantly different than zero anyway, so it could just be random fluctuation making that positive. Uh, the TSX return, okay, there's our slope, 1.1439. So it indicates to us that if the TSX index were to go up by 1%, that we'd expect CIBC stock to go up by about 1.14%. And on the conversely, if TSX stock, TSX index were to go down by 1%, we would expect CIBC stock to go down by 1.14%. Is that coefficient significantly different than zero? Well, we kind of go across here and we see a very, very teeny tiny p value. Uh, and we remember that our HO is at the beta 1 is not significant and our HA is that the beta 1 is significant or is different than 0 and that very small p-value suggests that we would reject H0 and yeah it looks like the what the overall market return is for the TSX is is related to the rate of return that uh, we would get on CIBC stock for that particular moment. Right? So we we can use their regression tools uh, to understand uh, very real life issues and uh, very real life problems. Okay, so this one I leave to you. I think I, I think we've done a, a lot of this already. This is just sort of a fill in the blanks, just so we can kind of get a sense for where the relationships are. And, and so it's 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 nice little practice that way, just so that the numbers aren't aren't always magic and you know. Theoretically, you know, I give you a piece of output. It doesn't have to be 100% complete. It just has to be complete enough uh, so that you could fill in the blanks if necessary. And that ends our show. And so concludes simple linear regression. Next phase, multiple linear regression. Kicking it up a notch. The fun gets even bigger in the next couple of segments.